NFL Week 7 is over, guys, and it sure was one heck of a ride. While Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense fought against a Carolina Panthers squad that might be in the middle of a restructuring, the Arizona Cardinals offense erupted at home against the New Orleans Saints, and the Green Bay Packers dropped for the third week in a row. Let's talk about our takeaways from the week in this video. First off, we have the Chicago Bears versus the New England Patriots. On a night when Justin Fields turned 12 planned runs into 55 yards and 5 first downs, all career highs by the way, the Bears found out his strengths. Chicago took advantage of his ability to be a dual threat as he went for 104 yards and a touchdown while throwing and running. As a result, the Bears finally gained momentum after 10 days off and ended their three-game losing run. Chicago still has 10 games left to develop an offense that makes the most of fields. The Bears are assessing the quarterback by concentrating on his attitude to each game and his ability to carry out his duties. They'll have more answers at the conclusion of the season than they anticipated if he can produce more performances as he did against New England. England. Bill Belichick's management of the quarterback position has us wondering how firm Mac Jones' grasp on the starting job is. The Patriots' defense, on the other hand, didn't show up, allowing Bears quarterback Justin Fields to control the game. Belichick said that the Patriots intended to play both Jones and Zapp on Monday. That may have had something to do with Jones gradually returning to action after suffering a high left ankle sprain. But with unsatisfactory results and an important AFC East game approaching, does Belichick think Jones needs more time to recover? Next up, we have the pitch Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Miami Dolphins. Tua Tagovailoa is back, but before he can reach his peak, he needs to shake off some rust. For the first three weeks of the season, the Dolphins led the NFL in points scored per drive, but after that, their offense began to stall. At least four of his throws were intercepted by Steelers defenders, and over the final three quarters, his timing with his receivers was hit or miss. Through seven weeks, the Dolphins have produced the fourth fewest quarterback pressures in the NFL. However, until their counterparts are fit, the pass rush will have to take on a greater workload due to the ailments their defense is currently experiencing. Things can't go on like this. The Steelers' defense held back Tagovailoa's comeback after giving up 13 points in the first quarter. They then limited the Dolphins to just three points over the remaining three because the defensive backs just missed four potential picks. The defense performed really well in the second half as the offense failed. Following an earlier victory over Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, the defense put up a great showing. Overall, the Steelers' defense appears to be way tougher than it was previously. At halftime of the Jets' game, Rookie quarterback Ken Pickett was introduced to help the Steelers' offense get going. The offense has been slow to establish, but more time spent together could help them improve their play. Now, for the Seattle Seahawks versus the LA Chargers. The Seahawks appear to be serious contenders with an offense that's still on fire and a defense that has caught up. After a flawless effort in their victory over the Chargers, the Seahawks now hold exclusive ownership of first place in the NFC West. Geno Smith, their quarterback, put out another effective performance, and rookie running back Kenneth Walker III scored twice on the ground. Their defense seemed to have improved over another dismal start with three sacks and two takeaways. If Metcalf is out, can the offense continue playing like this? In the first half, Metcalf was carried off the field and was ruled out. After two touchdown catches in this game, Marquise Goodwin excelled. D. Eskridge must follow if Metcalf's injury is bad for Seattle. In a three-game winning streak, the Chargers picked quite a few victories, but they also lost to the Seahawks once. They missed a chance to get better and secure their first four-game winning streak since 2018. 18 and instead lost. How are the injuries handled by the Chargers? After cornerback J.C. Jackson departed the field on a cart due to a right knee injury and wide receiver Mike Williams had a right ankle injury, the season has been characterized by injuries and now they may add two more serious doubts. Let's see what the season has in store for them. Let's talk about the Denver Broncos versus the New York Jets. For the first time since their previous postseason appearance in 2010, the Jets are 5-2 and two and have continued to play in the same manner. For the third straight game, they committed no turnovers, allowing their defense to win in the battle of field position. As of right now, the Jets have a perfect road record since, you guessed it, 2010. Does the Jets offense function properly without Brees Hall? The Jets suffered a heavy loss in this game when the rookie star running back Hall went down with a knee injury in the second quarter. The star of the offense is Hall, who ran for a 62-yard touchdown. Zach Wilson, the quarterback, is less stressed because he battled for the second week in a row. There was hope recently that the Broncos may rediscover their offensive groove, but that hope vanished when they lost their sixth game of the season by 16 points or fewer and their third by 11 points or fewer. In offensive combinations with two or three tight ends and two running backs, the Broncos performed better. When they were in those combinations, they moved the ball more effectively, but when they shifted into a catch-up mode and relied on their three wide receiver sets, they lost their lead. They just need to accept that they must play the way that's required at this time and not how they want to. Up next, we have the Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. After all, the Chiefs' pass rush isn't just limited to 
defensive lineman Chris Jones. When the Chiefs finally got their rush going against Jimmy Garoppolo of the 49ers, it was effective despite the delayed start to their pressure. If they're successful in maintaining this level of pressure, their defense will be hard to overcome. Can the Chiefs continue to punt return with rookie Sky Moore? Nobody who was vying for the Super Bowl could afford to do that. Moore is picking up skills on the job. In college, he didn't return punts, and against the 49ers, he had his second mishandled return of the year. The first one contributed to the Chiefs' loss against the Colts in a game played in Week 3. This one didn't, but the Chiefs should give him some time to practice before games so that he can master his new skill. Although General Manager John Lynch warned last week that Christian McCaffrey isn't a miracle solution for the Niners' problems, McCaffrey was a terrific addition to the 49ers. That was clear as Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes defeated the defense. The Niners' defense has fallen flat on its face. That was to be expected as the opposition improved and the number of injuries increased. In the second half, they had Kansas City facing 3rd and 20 and 3rd and 12 situations with a chance to leave the field. These two plays cost them a total of 91 yards. Even with injuries, this team has enough skill to keep those kinds of things from happening. Finally, we have the Las Vegas Raiders versus the Houston Texans. After their ending week, the Raiders are prepared to play. They lost their last five such games by an average of 17.8 points, and although they were 1-4 going into Sunday, only 3 of 16 after the bye since 2003, their skill suggested they were better. On top of that, their schedule became much more relaxed once Houston was defeated, since none of their following five opponents had a winning record going into this past weekend. Jacobs is vying for a deal after the new administration rejected his fifth-year option. There's a chance Devontae Adams will be more explosive and Derek Carr is in charge. But Jacobs managed to revive the offense. He finished with 143 yards and three touchdowns on 20 attempts, making him only the third running back in the history of the team to record three touchdowns in different games. On the other side, Texans quarterback Davis Mills had his greatest performance of the year. With a 62.7% completion rate, five touchdown passes, and four interceptions, Mills had a shaky day, but he played much better against the Raiders. He had a season-high 302 yards in total yardage, completed 68% of his attempts, and threw two touchdown passes. In addition, Mills was effective on third downs, completing both of his touchdown throws there. The Texans lost a potential victory because they struggled to stop the run, giving up the third most running yards in the NFL. The Texans need to figure things out quickly before they suffer more losses like this one. And that's all for this video. Which part of Week 7 did you enjoy the most? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.